Hey folks, Dr. Rob Jones here, HeyDrRob.com. Um, if you've been following my previous videos, I've been talking about, again, my favorite word, I'm going to wear it out, lower doses. The need to keep the spine in that good curve to be healthy, to not have back injury. Um, what I've been talking about the previous videos is how forward bending causes disc issues, causes spinal buckling, like my previous um, my, pre my previous video. What I want to talk about today is something that both flexing and extending will actually cause, and that's an injury called a spondylolysis or a spondylolisthesis. Okay, people um, typically butcher this word, so I'm going to write it down. If you have it, you're very familiar with it. Spondylolysis. Okay, spondylo makes relation to the spine. Lysis means a break, fracture, or termination of something. Spondylolisthesis is again, spondylo, relation to the spine. Listhesis means movement. Okay, why is this important? It's important because it happens a lot, and if your parents watching this, you're going to see this a lot in gymnasts, in divers, in people who do a lot of flexing and extending. Okay, we know if the spine is going to be safe, we've got to keep it in that 35 degree lordosis. Okay, technically, what happens in a spondylolysis, you can have an acute injury where the spine actually fractures. You know, you see that in gymnastics. Most of the time, what you're going to see is a spondylolysis or a spondylolisthesis where the patient just didn't realize they have it, get an x-ray MRI, and then it's found via that. And that's usually because of too much forward and backward movement. So what ends up happening is you see excessive amounts of extension, which is this way. So I'm bending backwards again, like a gymnast doing a back walk over, okay? And then excessive amounts of flexion, like sit-ups, crunches, banging over to touch your toes, forward rolls, divers will get this as well, you know, they're going flexing and extending, okay? What ends up happening is this area here, it's called the pars interarticularis, that actually wears down and literally breaks, it fractures. So again, it's because there's so much movement back and forth and back and forth, and really, the, the, probably the best analogy I can give you is, we just take a copper coat hanger, well, I don't even know if there's copper anymore, just a coat hanger, and I've taken the bottom off of it. If you take this coat hanger and you bend it over, let's see if I can get efficient at this, bend it over and over and over again. What is happening? Oh, there we go. That's a perfect example. It just broke, okay? What will happen before that break is you will see a stress mark, okay? Often people who have these injuries will start feeling some sort of back pain. And again, this is analogous to what's happening at that spot at the bone, okay? This is pretty dramatic. So I can feel it starting to get really weak, and there, there's a stress line right there, and then a couple more bends, bam. So that, again, is a perfect analogy for the spondylolysis and then the spondylolisthesis. The lysis is just the actual fracture itself. Once you have these, they're almost never gonna heal. What it does is it creates some instability now, and if it's an acute one, you need to be braced, and you need to have rehab, and it's a long time before the athlete can get back. If it's, a, if it's a spondylolisthesis, what will happen over time is, this is the sacrum right here. Well, let's see if I can draw it out with my terrible artwork. This is your sacrum right here, which is, it's like a little triangular bone right here at the very bottom. Now, there's a disc right here, and then there is L5 that sits right on top of it like that. What a spondylolisthesis is, is the L5, because these back elements that are holding the bone in place have fractured, that spine literally starts to slide forward. And when it starts to slide forward, you've basically got a situation where you're gonna have a lot of pain. So again, if we do another ugly looking sacrum here, and if we draw the disc kind of here, now what's happening is you can see that bone is actually displaced forward. You can see there's a little gap right here. Now it does a lot of different things. It puts pressure on the spinal cord. You get pain because of the structures. 
not too worried about that. I'm going to show you how to actually live with one of these. You can't fix it. Once you have it, it's there. The cool thing is though, if you do the right things with your body, keep your spinal lordosis, learn how to brace properly, you can continue to be active. You can, you can be an athlete. I've got a professional athlete right now that's playing in the professional basketball leagues here in the country and he's doing just fine. He's got one of these. Taught him how to contract his core properly and bend properly, move properly, so he doesn't bend over and over. He doesn't have any issues. So again, if you have a spondylolysis, spondylolisthesis, just like I said about discs, if you take out the bad movement, you take out the guesswork, you know you can prevent these things. And if you have it, you can prevent it from getting worse. So until next time, if you like this video, give me a like. Uh, check me out on the socials at Rob, And like always, don't forget to protect your back.